talk a little bit tonight, discuss a little bit about everyone's favorite discussion, depression. Uh, not my favorite. Also, not scared to go there. Not scared to admit I've struggled with that before and currently do struggle still with that. Um, it is a, it's kind of a day by day thing. Um, some days worse than others, but clearly something that um, is, is present in my life. And, you know, a lot of times I, uh, uh, later, earlier on in my in my journey with depression, I felt really misunderstood, and I reached out to a couple people, um, especially inside the church, and and uh, I was thrown uh, a couple Bible verses, and uh, really kind of shamed in a way of, hey, you know then you're not right with Jesus or there's something in your life that is not right and you need to get that fixed before blah blah you'll feel the joy and presence of the Lord and and um, and you want to talk about really like shame uh, to the highest degree that is it and uh, so therefore when I've gone through my recovery of just basically coming to the end of myself of what I knew I was and how I was and really getting down to the root of what is the issue and what was causing, you know, this gloom, this constant gloom that we like to call depression, where honestly, if you haven't been there before, we, we all have times and periods of sadness and grief, and but this, this depression is something that, that looms over a time period that... Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering when it will leave, uh, honestly, because I still have bouts with it uh, constantly. And uh, and it's almost like something you don't want to see coming. And it's almost that causes an anxious uh, mind uh, towards it, defensive, like, I don't want to go there. It's creeping up on me. Like, what can I do? And then you just completely fear it shut down. And a lot of times, I don't know know if I've ever experienced some of a panic attack of anxiety but I know others have and I know they're real and um, anyways so I'm not gonna give you the answers to what I think uh, so you know somebody with depression and you want to help them um, I'm not gonna give you like this step-by-step -step process because I think every individual is different and I think that um, I will say this, you first have to, to get someone comfortable to talk about it um, because our society um, is ultimately usually kind of scared of that or uh, they've met resistance towards that when they've tried to share that things are not right inside or, you know, I don't see what others see and and, um, you know, I try to find this happiness and joy is so short term. Um, so I'm going to tell you some things that you shouldn't do. I'm going to say the first thing you should do is is allow someone to, to get to know you, you know, to get comfortable with you. And, and you know, maybe just kind of say, what, what's going on with life? You know, is there something we'll talk about? And, you know, if they're willing to open up to you, then then that is the first step you do is you just listen. And you listen not to intervene, not to correct. Like, um, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be feeling like this. You know, you have it great. You should, you should look overseas or you should know how other kids have it or other people or, or so-and-so treats their wife or their husband or... Uh, this church does this this pastor says this like you know uh, you should get your stuff together that is the no-no and um, and unfortunately that's what a lot of people don't understand if you really haven't experienced it it's hard to understand and I get that so it has to you have to come from a place of just patience and I'm not going to judge I'm not going to intervene. I'm going to let them get this out. I'm going to hold that space with them. I'm going to make them feel comfortable. And 
I want them to know it's okay. Now, also be mindful that a lot of times when a first person starts really talking about some of this, it's gonna get emotional uh, because there's some stuff that has been repressed for a long time. And, uh, and I really, truthfully, I think that's where you kind of get to the point where this is not something I'm comfortable talking with you exactly about. I know it's real. Um, you know, I don't have the experience with that. And, um, but I know someone that does, or, um, you know, let's look at therapists, let's look at counseling, and let's, let's go with that and kind of refer them that away. Um, and I think that's big, um, because that has tremendously helped me, uh, change my mind on the whole counseling thing, therapists. It is a lot of power in that. And, List and and letting someone that is trained professionally to do that because there's a lot of times there's things that from years and years and years and years ago that are really kind of sparking that deep down and has to be dealt with so um one of the first things not to do though i'm just going to be honest with you i'm a spiritual person and um, I really believe God can heal anything and everything because he created us. Now, I will say this. I don't, I know everybody else, some people don't feel that way. And I feel like, um, and that's okay. I mean, that's, I'm not here to convince you you're of whatever. Like, you, everybody has to figure that out on their own. You know, I'd love to walk with you through that the uh, best I can and maybe understand why you feel that way, but I never just try to throw Jesus on people because it just doesn't. That's not the way it, it works. God is love. Love has to be received and has to be willing to be received. And, and a lot of people, honestly, before you get to that, a lot of times you have to get through the walls of pain because, um, to be honest, like if it's some depression dealing with things from the past of of uh, relationships uh, whether it be mom or dad issues or brother sister issues or family issues family origin issues um, friends um, some kind of trauma uh, abuse uh, addiction whatever it may be you, you have to get in touch and you have to and and kind of sit with that person and and this is where it's kind of go it's over my head my, as well but i have learned that really if you try to throw a bible verse or two and say you know and your faith needs to get stronger and you wouldn't have this issue i think that's totally craziness and i think that's something that really draws people away from jesus ultimately um, because yes i i agree to to an extent i know once i was able to really get through my feelings of unworthiness or or why things are the way they are or why i'm depressed or why i'm anxious or or why i'm feeling the way i do or way i react to people or certain things that i come across when i was able to kind of put have some understanding of why I may be reacting that way or why I have that issue, I could then start seeing and, and kind of healing from that. And that's when my faith really grew stronger. Because, for example, if you take someone that has uh, issues with uh, male authority figures, okay, father, grandfather, pastor, preacher, teacher, coach, you name it. You know, someone in the past that has, that has uh, betrayed them, wronged them, talk harsh to them, verbally abuse, physically abuse, whatever it may be. It's hard to talk about because a lot of times it is what it is. We see Jesus, we see God as that guy, as that male figure in the sky that we don't want to talk with him. And I say we as, as someone that is struggling with that because uh, <clears throat> a lot of times we 
that's the only way we've known him and we're not comfortable going there um, until we <laughs> understand maybe this is why I have been seeing him this way and he has nothing to do with that and you know I kind of you know now that I could see I could trust him uh, you know and it's not his fault you know um, and this has kind of been my weakness for him to show me his strength but at that at the point of really discovering these issues deep down is not the time to to really throw Bible verses at someone that is not in the faith and even if they are in the faith uh, I can tell you this they have probably researched and know every Bible verse there is and and all you're doing is is kind of yeah I already know I know I should be joyful I should be happy you know I should I shouldn't see him this way and I shouldn't see him that way and but you um, and 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 it's it's not your fault or the person that is trying to help they I think we ultimately all want to help but at, um, sometimes the the best help we can do is be there for that person support them help them find the resources they need and support their journey you know through the good and the bad and the, the setbacks and the the celebrations and and all of it is to be there with them and say look um i don't i don't have any idea what you're going through but i know that i you know i love you and i care for you and i want you to live full fully and uh and then I'm going to be with you on this journey however long it takes. And that is when people start understanding the love. And and if someone's like, well, you know, I've never had to experience, you know, I've been lucky. Uh, you know, I came from a great family and so did I. Uh, I, I did. I love my parents. My parents love me un, unbelievably. I mean, they did, and they still do, and I love them very much, um, but they're human, and uh, humans fall short, and usually it's because of previous generations and the cycle that tends to lead to addictions and and um, skewed perspectives, I guess, and, and a lot of times no one wants to do the work, no one wants to go inside and really see the root of the issue um, because we're not supposed to have feelings no one cares about feelings I don't, if I don't feel then I don't have to worry about it um, which therefore you can't fully be somewhere or give your your heart to somebody because that is where feelings are from and we all have needs and and for relationships so um, that is not the the answer now Going back to that is, um, I forgot my train of thought, but going back to, you know, finding the root and breaking the cycle and doing the hard work, uh, someone has to do it. And then, therefore, the cycle can be broken. And and um, I think it's it's really important to, to um, you know, maybe if you haven't had that struggle, you uh, going back that train of thought came back so if you did have the perfect home and you haven't experienced any kind of addiction now we're all addicted to something uh just just fyi you might not be aware uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily drugs or alcohol or or what it could be work it could be um, materialism it could be shopping it could be whatever but um even if you feel like you have the perfect background and, you know, I would really love to be there for people, but I don't talk their language, that's okay. But, you know, I know this about Jesus. He went where there was pain. You know, and a lot of times nothing's going to change unless, unless something changes i guess and that something could be you meaning you go to places that you're unfamiliar with you're you're not comfortable with like where pain is because if i drive home every day and and i really just don't even take the world in around me and 
I don't zoom out of my per my little world, the perfect little world, then I'm not going to see that. And and ultimately, some people literally look the other way when they see any kind of pain or 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 somewhere that they don't want to go with that. And uh, unfortunately, that's where Jesus needs you. That's where Jesus needs you to go. Is is uh, where where his people are needed and in the pain, in the mess, in the compassion, in the empath empathy, and being there and holding the space and experiencing the struggle and pain with people. And that will forever change your perspective. And I think you'll be able to open up and understand others a whole lot more if you are courageous enough to go there so anyways uh you know i really encourage i know there's a lot of people out there hurting and and i want to say this to kind of finish up on this but um ever since i've come to know my feelings and my recovery and why and the way i am and going to therapy um it hasn't gotten easier because you tend to have a gift of understanding and a lot of times it's okay um i love everybody that has reached out and help that's what it's about but it it comes harder because your life may be good good for a little bit a season but you start kind of carrying you know that someone else is fighting for their marriage or someone else is um, dealing with addiction at home or a loved one that just is completely going off the deep end to say or not faithful or are struggling in other areas to to say you start carrying that and it's a consistent thing of compassion and empathy now i'll tell you this that it is a reward in it because you start seeing the world differently and you start seeing um, seeing things as they are and and not something that they're not and understanding the brokenness of humans and human beings and God's creation and and it it really kind of opens your eyes and it's a lot to take in sometimes and um, you have to you can't really gulp it in you have to sip it and um and little by little you build up your capacity to be able to hold that space for people because there is some very dark places very some things that people are dealing with as i speak that you cannot imagine and and i don't have the answer <laughs> you don't have the answer and the, the therapist as good as they are and mine is a lot of times she don't have the answer and that's where the spiritual part of it is embracing the unknown of you know i don't know why this is happening or why i feel this way but maybe this is the thorn in my side where god my weakness is where god can show up and bring me strength and that's at the tail end of recovery where you can start seeing that but early on you can't it's the worst thing that's going on. I mean, it literally is like dying um, because life as you know it is dying. Life, the ego structure that you have built and you have, people have come to know you as, it's dying. It has to die for the, the true self to, to emerge and, and be comfortable and know its inherent worth of, I'm a child of God, I'm worthy, I'm because of who i am i am who i am and and that might not be enough for some people and that's okay they're not there at that journey and that's okay but that doesn't control me and um i find my worth from someone else but early on in recovery that's like really not something you hear much so um for those people that really are in a dark spot, 
my heart's with you and um and i i've consistently deal with stuff too and uh this has been a season of hurt for me um but you know that's where i've i've talked about my depression a lot some probably need to more but really that's where when things are exposed to the light they can uh, god can bring light to them and they have to be you have to have the courage and the vulnerability to go there and there has to be a safe place for that and um so i really encourage people um to to be in community to uh be ears listen to others because really honestly a lot of times that's what we need that's what we want we don't need self-help in a way okay eventually we will but Right now, I, I have the internet at my fingers and I can look up every verse there is about anxiety or self-rejection or hurt or betrayal or divorce or, or heartbreak. But I just need to get that out, bring it to light with somebody safe that will understand, maybe not even understand, but just is present present and says look i will go with you and, you know god god tells us you know if you don't believe in a god then then that's fine you know go i uh, encourage you on a journey but uh you have to discover them yourself you can't be told i really believe that um you can tell people a lot of things but they have to discover it themselves and once they do that's where you hang on to it because um it's there, not because people told me to look. It's when I wanted to look and when I found it that I will never go back. Um, there's nothing that Satan can convince me of. He tries. He will. He will continue attacking me, telling me I'm not enough. I'm a failure. That I'll be single for the rest of my life. That no one cares about these videos that I'm wasting my time, that there is not hope. And that's where I have to fight back. And it all goes right here. Usually my heart is not the problem, but I can't get to my heart because of all the noise here and all the analyzing and all the ways I can maybe control so I'm not in fear or anxious. And that's not the answer. And the way you answer to Satan is, <laughs> bro, you're you're defeated. I don't hear you. I'll acknowledge you that, yes, I know you are there. But here's the thing. Here's the card. There's Jesus. And I know what he's capable of. And he is always with us. He is God with us Emmanuel Manuel sorry but he's got with us Satan's been defeated and there are times where I let Satan go a little too far and that's where seriously it's you have to be constantly aware of the things that you entertain the things that you let come to your mind and it's like, mm, if you let him sit there for too long, you better believe it. He's good. Satan is smart. But he, he can't stand up to Jesus. That's that's your trump card. And I hate to use that word. I'm not biased towards anybody who's president. Um, I don't care who's president. You know, I'm going to support them because I'm American. But anyways... Uh, some people just totally forget everything I just said before this. And, like, I either hate that guy or love him. That's fine. No big deal. Um, you'll find out that life is, uh, <laughs> kingdom life is more than that. About who is this and who is that. But, uh, anyways, that's for another day. Thanks for tuning in. Love y'all. Help somebody.
be, be the change you want to see in the world. In the words of Gandhi, it's true. You know, if you, I didn't, I, was, I had a hard time finding people to listen to me, to understand me. And that one person, the first person that did, will forever be a, hold a place in my heart. And he knows that. <laughs> and, and what I'm saying is I've made it a purpose of myself. I've made it a, a promise to myself that I will be that person for those that need to be heard. Have a great night. Thanks.